everybody it is sherry with i love to giggle too how is everyone this great monday morning it is a monday morning here in ohio it is cold we are supposed to be looking at i think maybe some snow um this afternoon until seven o'clock in the morning on tomorrow i will see how that goes y'all let me tell you something about ohio ohio is really bipolar when it comes to weather so you don't know what it's going to be. You're going to have to peek out the window and see if it actually happened as the weatherman stated it would happen. So I'm excited about the snow a little bit. I'm not a fan of winter time, but we haven't really had any snow for months now. I mean, years. So I would like to see a little bit of snow, y'all. So here we are. It is the week of Valentine's Day. I'm doing this video kind of early. I, in the video that I had prior to, the recap of Wendy Williams, I put that, uh, we were going to talk about relationship and we got some responses that people say, hey, we would like to talk about relationships. So let's talk, honey. Let's talk about relationship. Okay, so this is what we're eating today. I'm eating a little healthy today. So we're going to have healthy eating and healthy relationships. How about that? <laughs> so let me show you my little plate here. Can you see it? I don't want to tip the egg salad. This is egg salad. I have it on um, a bed of lettuce with some uh, provolone cheese. Got a couple of few sliced tomatoes, some cucumbers. The sprinkle that's on the top is actually everything bagel. Um, everything, everything but the bagel seasoning. And this here is a spinach artichoke um, dip that's made out of Greek yogurt. So that is what I'm eating today for lunch while we talk about relationships. And if you have not liked the page or subscribed to the page, feel free to do so. Also, push that bell, that notification, so that you will uh, get a notification, a uh, ring, I guess, <laughs> or bell, ding, ding, when we have new content available. So I know a lot of you guys know me from I Love to Giggle too on TikTok or either Instagram or Facebook or wherever you happen to see my social media stuff. So today on YouTube here, this is going to be the other side, y'all. Um, uh, this is the other side of Sherry here. So let me, hold on a second, y'all. Let me try this little, I done ate this little sauce up. I'm so mad about this sauce because I wouldn't purchase some of this sauce from um, Kroger's and it was like $3.99. Then my daughter convinced me to go to Aldi's. So I went to Aldi's. Let me know if y'all have an Aldi's or save a lot in your area. And then tell me where you're from too. Um, I like to know the demographics. And they had the same thing for $1.99. So you know the first thing you think of, if it's from Aldi's, it's not gonna taste the same. I mean, this sauce is just as good. I said, oh, I'll be making another trip to Aldi because I scooped the last bit, y'all, out, um, out of that jar. <laughs> And my daughter gave me a good idea. She was like, instead of eating it with potato chips, mom, not potato chips or like pretzel sticks or whatever you eat it with, she said, try it with cucumbers. And I'm like, okay, now, so we're going to stay on the, the good old tip here, y'all. So we're trying to do a little healthy eating around here. I really uh, lost it yesterday when I was at the Super Bowl thing, eating all that pizza and wings, honey. It was good, y'all. Shout out to Tampa. <laughs> For winning. I'm not a huge football fan, but my son is. My son and my ex-husband were, and they were diehard Patriots. They like the Patriots, but they love Tom Brady. So now that he's with a different team, we got to cheer for him. And I dare not go into his house and try to cheer for somebody else. It just ain't going to happen. It wouldn't even matter if it was the Bengals. I can't cheer for the Bengals. I got to cheer for Tampa, because that's where Brady is, die hard. So, let's talk about relationships. So let me know in the comments if you're in a relationship, or is it complicated? <laughs> um, or are you in a relationship and the other person ain't in a relationship and you don't know they're not in a relationship? If you're married, single, what's your status? For me, I am divorced. How, I've been divorced about six years. So, but I was in a relationship with my um, kid's father, that's, I have four children, that's their dad, for 24 years, y'all. We linked when we were 17, we used to live across the fence from one another. We linked up when we were 17. Honey, I was skipping school. Supposed to have been at school, y'all. Down there at the show, trying to watch, I'm gonna get you sucker. Have y'all seen that movie? 
and ran across him at the hot dog stand, child. And so we were linked up for 24 whole entire years. Now, as time goes back and I look at it, I didn't know it at the time that we linked, but I knew it shortly after that he was already in a relationship with someone. Mm. Oh, well, that was a hot one. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> I think I put too much uh, vegan mayonnaise in this right here and made this egg sound a little bit too watery, y'all. So I apologize for that. I knew he was in, I knew eventually shortly after he was in a relationship. But by that time, I thought I was the baddest, y'all. So I went forward with it. And one thing that I learned, you cannot reinvent the wheel. And how you get that person is how sometimes you will lose him. And I got him cheating. Guess what? And I lost him cheating. 24, well, it was cheating well before 24 years. So I found myself at 40 something years old, 42. I think I was 42 or 43. Back in the dating scene, divorce. I had to figure out who are you? And in the divorce, there was a lot of infidelity on his part. There were some children. Honey, some children, y'all. <laughs> that um, were a child. There were children that one child I knew about. Um, but the other child, I never knew ever in life. And this is how it goes down, y'all. We get the divorce. Um, he was mad because he tried to sue me for an asset that we had um, that we acquired when we were married and it didn't work. Um, it fell in my favor. And so he called my younger daughter. Now, mind you, my younger daughter at this time was maybe about 18 years old and asked her, hey, do you know this girl named such and such? Now, mind you, the girl and my daughter were not friends, but they had been in the same classroom since like the ninth grade. Now, mind you, my daughter had just graduated high school. And he said, she was like, yeah, I, you know, I, I know her. She's in my classroom or whatever. I don't know. Uh, you know, we're not friends, but I know her. He said, that's your sister. Ooh. That was her sister. And so we found out my daughter was always upset that her dad did not come to her prom. He didn't come to her, you know, to see her get dressed for prom. He didn't take pictures with her. And he didn't come to her graduation. And for some time, it bothered her. And I'm like, you know, I, I didn't know why he didn't come. What excuse can you have for not being at your daughter's prom when you're in the city, you're not in the military, there's no circumstances. But come to find out, the other girl was graduating at the same time, so I can't be seen at either one because which side would I sit on? And if I take pictures with my daughter, which is our child together, and they go to school and show everybody prom pictures. Like, yeah, this is my dad and his mom. Well, that's my dad. So, needless to say, that came out maybe 20 minutes after the divorce was decreed. Honestly, y'all, it did not bother me that much because I was not in love with this man. It was some Jerry Springer type stuff. But I wasn't in love with him. So that little last monkey wrench you try to throw at a sister didn't work. Bothered my daughter. Had a lot of crying and, you know, she had a lot of crying and, and working through it. But it kind of busted up the other kid's relationship with him too. Like, dad, dad, you, that's scandalous, man. We just gonna call it like it is. You, my dad, I love you, but you foul for that one. So, infidelity throughout for 24 years. Throughout. And we were married for like 11 and a half years. Infidelity then, on his part. Now, when we were dating, we had infidelity on both parts. Mine was more based upon, okay, you're not going to keep cheating on me. I can get somebody too. But it wasn't really in my nature to do that. But I know when sometimes you're in a relationship that's not healthy and good, you'll start acting out in ways that you never would have acted out in. 
toward the end of the divorce or whatever, I was so mad. I was so bitter. I was so hurt. I was that bitter black woman, honey. Okay, now, I was a bitter black chick. And so I said, okay, Sherry, you can do one or two things. You can go get in another relationship. It's not hard to find somebody to get in a relationship with. It's not hard to find somebody to link up with a dime a dozen. That's not hard to do. But what are you going to do with you? And so I ended up really taking some time to figure out what role did I play in that? What role did you play in the whole scenario? Yeah, you can, you can pull the victim card. I can definitely pull the victim card. You did this, you did that, all those different things. But at the end of the day, what role did you play in that? If he was cheating prior to you getting married, then why would you marry him thinking that it would be something different? What role did you play? I had to ask myself, what role did I play in that? And I had to think within myself, what was lacking in me that I decided to go along with them? not make a move to leave with the first baby, or even at the very beginning when I knew he was in a relationship. What was lacking in me as a woman? What was I looking for as a, well, I wasn't a woman then, but it's just a young woman. What was lacking in me that made me feel that it was okay to be treated like that, to be cheated on, and when they cheat, and then still continue to put up with it. Yeah, you have your arguments. Yeah, you had your screaming matches. But I stayed. But I stayed. All through that, I stayed. So I had to have a moment with myself as a woman to say, what were you searching for? And how can you be a better person from what you are when you were 17 years old? I found in relationships, you can get older, but sometimes we was making the same dumb decisions that we made when we were 16, 17 years old. Now I'm 42, I can go right back out here again, find another person, No, they're not on the up and up, or we're not in the same you know, frame of mind, I'm looking for monogamous, I'm looking for this, I'm eventually looking for a husband and go fall right into the same thing, same decision-making that I made back then. And so I had to have that moment with myself when I decided to stop blaming him for everything. At some point, I had to say, it is okay for you to have a girlfriend over here and me over here. I may not have said it out my mouth, but when I stayed in a relationship, I argued about it, but I never made an intentional move to break it up to say, hey, this is not what I want. So I took the time. It took me. I promise you guys, I used to sit on the side of my bed for like three and a half years, literally, and cry. I couldn't say his name out of my mouth without just busting out in tears. I was so angry. I was so upset. I was so hurt. And I had to have this moment with myself that at 40 something years old, I had to have an honest moment with me. I didn't go broadcasting it to other people until I was ready to tell people my story. But I said, Sherry, you're desperate. You were desperate. You were desperate for love. I didn't get from my dad what I needed from him. He was emotionally attached. He was alcoholic. He was abusive. He, he was the one that hollered all the time. He'd holler, ah, just holler, holler. And so that was my first impression of how men engage with women. Controlling, holler, is there a way or no way? And so as a young woman, that's what I felt. Oh, that's what I saw portrayed. There were no books, self-help books at that time like they, they have now. It's a lot of relationship books and self-help books and motivational speaking and all of those. It wasn't YouTube. It was barely the internet. 
and I was a product of what I saw. And so here comes this guy. And he was just like, as years go on, just like my dad. Controlling. He didn't drink. He didn't cuss. Controlling. Abusive. Mentally, physically, uh, verbally. And I stayed because that was my norm. But it wasn't until I decided to say, you know what? I need to break this cycle. This is not normal. This is not how everybody's relationship is. This is not how men, all men, treat women. I had to put that in my mind, even though I never saw it outside of a movie. I never saw in the relationships, my grandparents' relationship was not great. Love my granddad, but he was a cheater. He, he would buy prostitutes. I was married to my grandmother. My grandmother was more, I guess, high sedity, so she started cheating, but she cheated with a doctor that worked where she worked. But it, in essence, it was still cheating. It didn't matter if it was down here with a prostitute cheating or you cheating with the district attorney, you're cheating. So their relationship wasn't great. The people that were around me as I got older, in church, outside of church, relationships were not great in their marriage, but they, has, they had longevity in their marriage but I knew the behind the scenes of what was going on. So now this is what marriage looks like. This is what relationships look like. And it was a lie. It was a lie. Whatever my dad didn't have back then, he just didn't have it. He never tried to better himself. He never tried to change his ways. Okay, that's him. I can't forever blame him for what I didn't get. But I decided every guy is not like that. Every man is not abusive. Every man is not a holler, a, a argumentative, or a drunker. And it doesn't make them a, a wuss or a punk because they're not aggressive, um, you know, with you in a relationship. But I had not seen that, but I desired to see it. So what I did was, I began to stop watching. Look at look how simple it was for me. Just to, to stop watching movies that had a negative portrayal of men. Because that was feeding my thought. Started watching more love stories or women that um you know were looking for love. The Hallmark channel. And it, it sounds um goofy or it sounds whatever. I started reading Harlequin romances and stuff like that because my mindset was to change how I view male and female relationships or relationships, you know. I had to change that because that abusive, those different TV shows, those different movies, and I'm not naming any producers that make movies. There's a lot of them that make movies. I had to change my mindset and stop watching those things for a while so that I could understand that every man is not like that. But I had to find myself. So if you don't know yourself, know what you want, know what you like, know what you will put up with, know what you don't put up with, I wouldn't suggest being in a relationship because you're gonna go in that relationship not having definitive lines that you can tell them that they cannot cross. If, if you, you, can't, you can't give them boundaries um, because you don't know what you even want. So I had to find out what do you even want in a relationship? And not everything of what do you want, but what are you able to bring to the table in a relationship? Um, it's always great to want, but what can you bring to the relationship? Um, at the time that I was going through this, I had to be honest with myself. I wasn't ready for a relationship. I didn't have anything to bring to the table but negative words, bitterness, and I may put my hands on you. I may punch you in your face. As soon as you trigger me and raise your voice, I'm going to snap. So I had to say, Sherry, you're not ready for a relationship right now. Maybe it's, it's okay to be by yourself. That's okay. And you do have your moments around Valentine's Day and Sweetest Days. You may. 
have your moments. But I learned to not feed into it, not sit there and sulk. Not why she got a man and I ain't got no man and she don't even look better than me. That's foolishness. I learned to buy myself some flowers. I learned to learn me, understand me, build me up in areas where I was low. During that time, I have a 17 year old. I mean, you got some confidence, but you ain't got major confidence. But as I grew as a woman with this person, the things that he did killed my confidence. So, and it took years to kill it. So it may take some years to build it back up. And so now at this moment today, I can say that I am ready for a relationship because I found myself, I know what I want. I, I know what I don't want. I know what I desire. I know what I don't desire. I know what I will put up with and what I will not put up with. I know what I can bring to the table. And I know, you know, and I want a person that can bring the same thing to the table. But at this time, I don't desire a relationship with anyone. Only because... Oops. Sorry, y'all. Only because... From 17 years old all the way to 42. Well, really all the way 17 to 49. For like 30 plus years, I given myself to people. It was either the marriage, the relationship, my children, my church, friends, family. And I had to give, you know, be somewhere for somebody, be supportive for somebody. My last son, thank God, graduated this past May. And it's been 30 years that I raised kids. 30 years I raised kids, 24 years in a relationship, and other people that was connected to me, giving myself to them. And at this point now, the reason why I don't want a relationship, because I want to be selfish. <laughs> I want to be selfish with my time. If you're in a relationship, you know there has to be compromise. You have to, you know, consider someone else and all of those different things. I don't want to do that right now. I did that for 30 plus years of considering other people and putting other people before me and being there for other people. And at this time, I like doing me. I like, if I decide I want to have egg salad and tomatoes and this, I, if a dinner I decide I want to have Chinese food, fine. If I decide I don't want to cook, it's fine. I don't have to consider anybody else. I'm not just saying with cooking, but I don't have to consider anybody else. So I decided next month, even though there's COVID, I'm going to take a vacation. Now, if I'm in a relationship with somebody, I mean, I have to consider where you want to go. Where you want to go? I want to go see water. I got to go, you know, I want to go to the beach area. And they may say, well, hey, I want to go to Vegas. Oh, Okay, you know, and then we have to compromise on something because I'm all about compromising. I'm all about it ain't what I want to do. I'm all about compromise. But because it's just me, I don't have to consider anybody so I can go and come as I please. If I decide, y'all, it's some days, honey, I will call off of work and sit myself in the bed all day and watch Lifetime Movie Network. Now I can watch those movies because I don't have that negative perception all the time about men. But even that is indiscretion to some reason. You know, you just get, can't do too much or whatever. If I decide to do that, I can. If I decide not to clean my house, I'm like, you know what? I ain't gonna clean up but the kitchen and the bathroom. That's my mama said. I don't care if your dog's sick. Can we clean the kitchen and the bathroom? If I decide I'm just gonna clean the kitchen and the bathroom and throw my clothes on the end of my bed, that's fine. So, because I decide that I want to be selfish with me and with my time and what I want to do and what I want to eat and where I want to go, why would I get in a relationship knowing that I have to give somebody something and then cheat them or try to overpower them or try to get them to do everything that I want them to do? 
So it's according to where you're at. I probably feel, you know, different a year from now, six months from now, whatever. I may come to that point and say, hey, I'm tired of being by myself. You know, I desire a relationship. And do whatever necessary steps or whatever. You know, go back to the dating scene or whatever it is. But I don't desire that now. So that, if you're going to be in a relationship, know you before getting in a relationship. If you just got out of a relationship, I, I advise, I strongly suggest taking some downtime. At least six months. Downtime, honey. To figure out where did that relationship go wrong. Was it all on them? Was it all on you? How did you play a role so when you go into the next relationship, you can be better at it? I don't. I watch people that I know someone that just hops from relationship to relationship, and I'm like, girl, what are you looking for? Whatever you're looking for in them, you gotta have it in you. You want them to bring something to the table, but you don't have anything to offer. You know, are you financially stable? Um, you want them to have great credit, but what is your credit looking like? You want them to give to you, but buy it for your own. You know, um, what can you give to them? You want a house, but I mean, come on. What is it? Is your credit in enough in a good place that they can even put you on the deed to a house? So, but that person wasn't ready and that's fine because everybody, it took me 24 years y'all to get ready. It took me 24 years. You think it wasn't people telling me, girl, get out of that, get out of that. And even within myself, I knew. But because I didn't build myself up, I felt like this is all that there is. And it's not. So if you're going to get in a relationship, relationships are great. Being in love is wonderful. Having a mate. At the time that we were married and the marriage was, you know, going good for a while, I love being married. My parents were married. All I saw was marriages. They weren't great marriages, but that's all I come from was marriages. My grandparents, my grandparents, grandparents, you know, my great grandparents, uh, paternal and maternal were married. My dad and mom were married to the day that she died and he got married shortly after that. That's, uh, that's all I know is marriage. So I was never big on shacking up, even though I did, I wasn't big on shacking up. So I love marriage. That's what I see, but I desire a healthy one versus just being married. I, girl, if I want to put on a wedding dress, I go put on a wedding dress. I buy me a wedding dress. Be like Dennis Rodman. Show it to my marriage, to my wedding. And be up there marrying myself. <laughs> but if you're going to be in that relationship, be ready for it. Mentally, physically, and get rid of the baggage. Yeah, you'll have little triggers and things like that, but know how to process your way through that, that certain situation. So, that's my relationship talk on this week. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared on whatever you do. And if you're not prepared, if it's not fulfilling, do whatever necessary steps you need to do, counseling or what have, have you. And that's it. But with this being Valentine weekend, you know, for all my single sisters and brothers out there, because there's some single brothers out there looking for some good women too. It's some single brothers out there that ain't for the shenanigans and things like that. You know, if you don't have one this week, honey, buy you something. Buy you something. Valentine's Day will be said and gone. You know, go go the day after Valentine's Day. They got all kind of candy, y'all. <laughs> candy and teddy bears. <laughs> so, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave your comments down there. Let me know what you feel. Let me tell, uh, show me some topics you may want to talk about. I'm always in somewhere eating and cheating, chatting anyway. Let me know what topics you want to talk about or whatever. And, you know, what's your take on, on a healthy relationship? You know, how can you better yourself? What is it that you can do more of or less of, you know, in the relationship? And then if you aren't in a relationship, what did you do to date? Like, you got to move with the time back then. You just met people as you went to the store or whatever. Now it's all kind of social media dating them. And look at this, y'all. I know some people that linked up with people on social media and have a beautiful marriage, y'all. Now, I don't see all bad marriages now. I know some people got some beautiful marriages. Thank God for that. But um, so social media is, is, a, is an avenue to date. 
Did you meet your person on social media? You know what I mean? Um, or how did you meet that person? Some people say, well, if you want to meet a guy, you got to go where they're at. They're at the sports bar and they're at this and they're like, I'm like, oh, okay, then that's true, but I don't like sports like that. But, you know, if I got to go in there, woohoo, with a, <laughs> with a Buccaneers uh, thing when I decide to start dating, I guess I will. <laughs> got to blend in, you know, but what's your take on relationships? What's your take? And where are you at right now? in your relationship do you desire it do you want out of it what is it so i thank you guys for tuning in visit me on tiktok and ig under i love to giggle too um like and subscribe to the page and if you want to check me out on facebook you can do that as well all right great talking to you guys i'm finish up this little bit of food here y'all and you have a good day bye everybody